Christ is risen. Christ is risen. No, 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 no. Very good. Alithos and Esti. And Messiah Hukam. Better. The passage we just read has so much to tell us and so much good news in it that if we forgot all about the Gospel of John and just focused on this one passage, we will learn a whole lot. But we have to take things into context. This is a very common passage that we hear when someone passes away. But at this particular time, remember, Jesus was with his disciple right before he was going to be crucified. They are troubled. There's a lot of commotion. There is so much going on. And he says, don't be troubled. I know you're, you're worried that you're going to miss me, but I'm letting you know we are going to have a reunion. We're going to be together very soon. And when we do, it's going to be even better than what we have together today. But for the many times that we've heard this passage, we always think of, okay, yes, um, you're telling me that everything here on earth is bad and, and is suffering and that the reward is in heaven. So I have to just be patient, endure being miserable here on earth so that Eventually, when we get up in heaven, everything will be great. Many of us think that way. And he's trying to tell us what I'm telling you is what we have here together doesn't even match up or compare to being with me forever. And if we notice, he says, in my father's house, I will come again and receive you to myself. It's a reunion of a relationship. It's a reunion of an ongoing, magical, dynamic bond that Jesus and the disciples had formed together over the short time that they spent together. And we have to take that to heart. Of course, Thomas has to, he has to like try and make it a little bit more complicated. He's like, Lord, we don't know what you're talking about. Give us like a, a manual. Give us some uh, things to uh, uh, memorize. Give us a plan so we can follow it. This is Thomas. He wants everything hard line, hard copy, written down, what to do, what not to do, how to do this, uh, where to go, where not to go. And Jesus is like, you don't get it. You don't get it. He's, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. You're looking for some formula to follow. You're looking to be somehow put into a frame of how to be a good Christian or how to be religious. And I'm telling you, I am the life. Just get it. Do you get it, Thomas? 
And Philip comes up and like, again, okay, just give us yani, yani, the, the end or result. We're all good people. All the world uh, uh, are all believing in God. We're all the same. And, and just show us the Father and let's move on. And, and everybody needs to love everybody. And as long as you're a good person, it's all good. And again, Jesus is, is pleading with Thomas and Philip. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You've been with me this long. The relationship that you have with me is it. This is what it is all about. And this is why when we get reunited, it's going to be way, way, way more and way more and beyond what you have seen here from me. And if you don't believe me, just check out the works that I've done. Just in case you are still wondering if I am true or not. If I am the life or not. You know, we got so sidetracked by... Um, all right, so, so how many times do I have to be in church to kind of match up or meet the requirements? Um, okay, so, so how many times do I have to pray to kind of get to that level? Or, okay, what should I not do, and, and what should I do, and how should I talk to my friends, and should I, should I have, like, friends that are, don't go to church, or what's the deal? There's, there's, no, there's no need for all that. There's no need for all that. And this is why so many of us just wander off, you know, when, when, we, when we leave uh, uh, our families or go to colleges or go to work somewhere and we're just like drowned in all these different things and and all it takes get a relationship with Christ talk to him talk to him this is what he came for i am the life i am the truth and, and the whole chapter of John and the whole story, the stories that we heard this whole week and the weeks before, whether it's the Samaritan woman, the blind man, the leper, was about this personal connection that was created on that day. You and I need that. And we need that desperately. And we need it today. Um, a few weeks ago, I'm not sure how many of us caught that, but a, a uh, young priest, a Catholic priest in, in Cairo, in Heliopolis, in Egypt, 32 years old, Pear Stevens was his name, passed away in a very, um, and he went up to the mountain to pray, as he used to do a lot, and fell and passed away. And from that day on, the amount of, of, of people that sp came up and spoke about how, how his life has impacted just because of the way he communicated with Christ and with them. And the thousands and thousands and thousands of posts that came out telling about how his life has impacted them. And everyone said... He was so much like Jesus. He was so much like Jesus. And for whatever it's worth, I don't believe God's plan is for us to just be miserable here so we can have a, a, a better life later on. I don't think he ever meant that. In fact, if anything, it's the opposite. I came to give you life and give you life more abundantly. But there are three things that keep us from identifying and relating to Christ in this way. 
and I'll just share them. And maybe you think, maybe you fall under one of them. I don't know. But again, we get so sidetracked by, by so many things around us. But number one is, is the lack of spiritual hunger. Why is that? You know, in this day and age, we are so distracted. We are so filled to the brim with promises of, of uh, happiness, of fulfillment, and, and of, of gratification on every level and every aspect you can think of. If it's not the material gadgets, if it's not the luxurious lifestyle, if it's not the glory and fame on the social media, if it's not the bright lights of entertainment, if it's not all that, our brains are just buzzing with things promising something that they cannot deliver. They cannot deliver. And for whatever it is, St. Augustine had it right. He said, our hearts have this inner craving for you, O God, and we will never be satisfied until we are filled with your spirit. And again, it goes back to the personal relationship that I have with Christ. There are so many things that try and fill us. Relationships, false relationships, um, you name it. And, and as if this wasn't enough, you know, a couple of years ago, all this stuff came out with cancel culture. Everything that belongs to the previous generation, scratch it out. Forget all about that. Let's just live our lives the way we want to and, and we'll be fine and we'll be happy. Are people happier today, do you think, than they were? I don't know, but the numbers are out there. You can uh, go into that in depth if you want. We'll talk. And I'm just saying this because I know there's so much going on around us that is trying to catch our attention. And we are so trapped by smart devices. And they are smart because they know how to trick us. They know how to grab us. They know how to manipulate our minds and change how we think and how we believe. And, and I, I'm not against any of that, but the key is Christ is the life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the need for you and me. And it doesn't happen just like that. It doesn't happen, you know, I get this app that every morning sends me a verse from the Bible, and that just is, like, amazing. Good for you. But have you talked to Christ? Do you communicate together on a daily basis? Does he know what's going on in your heart? Does he know, oh, you know what? When I listen to this particular song, my heart melts. Excellent. Do you talk back to him when your heart melts about a song that talks about God? Do you go down on your knees and tell him, God, thank you. I needed that. You know, we're so quick to just like... <sighs> Secondly, is not just the lack of spiritual hunger because of the false things that promise us, but it's the lack of vulnerability. Vulnerability is a very precious ingredient that is absolutely, absolutely needed in every generation. It's kids, if you're listening to me, 
If you're hurting, say I'm hurting. If you're happy, say I'm happy. If something is not going well for you, say it. Don't make a, you know, don't, don't just go and scream and, and, and nobody knows what's going on in your life. Speak up who you are. Be who you are. We have learned to adapt, to be politically correct, and to be nice. That's good. That's a good sign of a civilization that is trying to get by. But Jesus was, was adamant when he encountered, especially the Samaritan woman, and everyone else is to go right to the core. Who are you really? And when he, when he shared his life, when, when, when Paul, the apostle, shared his life, he never shied from talking about all the pains that he and groans that he has gone through. One of the, today's uh, people that is uh, maybe an, out there did a TED talk, his name is, her name is Brene Brown. Brene Brown started by doing a talk about all the struggles that she had with her kids. And it just blew everybody's mind. And fast forward, I learned that her role model was a priest, a Franciscan priest, whose name is Father Richard Rohr. And she says, I've learned everything from Father Rohr about how to be myself and how to just be open and be vulnerable. And for me to meet with Christ, I need to be taking down all the facades, all the masks, all the pretentious, all the arrogance, all the pride. Everything has to come down, and I come before God, and I pray, and I cry, and we connect. That's how he loves me, and that's how he pours his life for me. The story of the prodigal son is not just about repentance. It's about the father running, running, embracing his son, not just taking, embracing him, throwing himself over him. You're back. And this is what today's message is about. Throw yourself into the father's arms. Christ is your life. And lastly, is we've, we've all suffered from the pandemic. We've all suffered from the isolation. And it's time that we reconnect. It's time that we open our hearts and our lives to each other. And it doesn't happen until I come to Christ and see myself as I am and then open my heart to others. Lastly, in the book of Jeremiah, in chapter 12, verse 5, there is a verse that just keeps coming back and back and back to me. And in it, Jeremiah was lamenting, as he always does. And he's talking to, to God and why this, and why that, and why me, and why are the rich happy, and why is everyone 12.5? And then God lets him speak up, and, this, and then he says to him, you know what? If you have raced with men on foot, and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? 12.5. If you're just barely making it in your normal day-to-day life today, how do you think you will do when life really gets tough? And you know it will, and it does, for all kinds of reasons. You're barely running with people that are on foot. You know, like the infantry, uh, uh, the, the Moshe. And you're running against them and you're, <sighs> you can't even make it. How about if you are expected to compete in life 
not against people, but against circumstances where there's horses. We're just in need of a awareness of how much we need Christ. At every level in the morning, and I'm not talking about a verse that pops up on my screen. I'm talking about time, quality time, personal outpouring of my heart, of my life. Talk to him instead of talking to your therapist or your friends or, you know, putting stuff on, on, on your social media and, and pretending you're someone else and acting like everything is fine and it's not. And it's not. Today is a new day. And as we uh, uh, come to the conclusion of the, of the uh, days following the resurrection, let us get to the bottom of it. Let us pour our hearts to Christ and pray that he will be my life. The truth that I hang on to. We can talk about apologetics all day long. You know? And I'm happy to do that. But I don't believe that the reason many of us have not been in love with Christ has to do with apologetics. I think it has to do with our hearts that are in need of a hunger for God in our lives. To him be all glory forever.